Today, the Justice Department and IRS reportedly investigating the world's largest crypto exchange with concerns over criminal activity. Disney disappoints in its later quarterly earnings. Where did it fall short and why is it optimistic about the future? And this year's Rich States, Poor States report is out. Where does your state rank in terms of economic competitiveness? That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Good evening. Great to have you with us. April's retail sales numbers seem to show Americans are changing their spending habits as things get back to normal. Overall, sales are the same as March when we saw the latest round of stimulus checks. But Americans spent more at restaurants and bars and less on furniture and clothing and sporting goods. Spending at bars and restaurants is apparently just 2% down on pre-pandemic levels. Americans did spend more on cars last month, though. Low supply has driven up prices. But what a difference a year makes. Overall, sales are 50% higher than April last year. And changing habits helps some restaurants and bars, but hurt others. Disney's streaming service didn't add as many new subscribers as analysts had expected last quarter. Its parks revenue also disappointed. But it's staying positive. Anthony's Con Fredrickson takes a look at the company's latest quarterly earnings. Disney's latest quarterly results disappoint, partially because of fewer than expected Disney Plus subscribers. The company's stock fell 3.5 percent in after-hours trading Thursday. Disney CEO Bob Chapek discussed this with CNBC. This quarter's numbers were exactly as we projected internally, so uh, no, no disappointment here. The streaming service, expected to hit 109 million subscribers, only came in at about 104 million. And obviously, park attendance was down. Most of them were closed during the pandemic, and those that were open operated at significantly reduced capacities. On the bright side, recent CDC guidance that says vaccinated people don't need to wear masks is huge news for the company. Uh, particularly if anybody's been in Florida in the middle of summer with a mask on. Uh, that could be quite daunting. So uh, we think that's going to make for an even more pleasant uh, experience. Disney's also excited about its new theme park attraction, Avengers Campus. As well as its newest cruise ship, the Disney Wish, which features settings from multiple Disney movies. And it will release movies in theaters again, featuring titles like Jungle Cruise, and Black Widow. They're hoping to get between 230 to 260 million Disney Plus subscribers by 2024. Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. And Americans seem to be flying more than at any time during the pandemic. The Transportation Security Administration says it screened 1.7 million travelers Thursday. That's about 36,000 more than Sunday's previous record. But one trade association says last week volumes are still 30 percent lower than last year. The CDC loosened mask requirements yesterday. It said people who are fully vaccinated don't need to wear them indoors anymore. But federal rules still require everyone to wear them on planes, trains and buses. There's no vaccine requirement for flying, but Delta Airlines will force all new U.S.-based workers to get it any person joining Delta in the future, future employer, we're going to mandate they be vaccinated before they they can sign up with the company. It's one of the first major companies to require it. One federal agency says companies can legally require employees and new hires to be vaccinated, but current Delta employees won't be forced, even though the company really wants them to do it. Apparently, 60 percent have got at least one shot. And the return to travel is definitely helping Airbnb. It breezed past expectations in the first quarter with bookings up over 50 percent. Here's Anthony's Evelyn Lee with the details. Welcome, come in. Airbnb announced their first quarter results Thursday, and it beat Wall Street expectations. With easing restrictions, Airbnb's bookings jumped more than 50 percent and revenue increased by 5 percent. Billions of dollars in new bookings were recorded when the vaccines rolled out, and it's optimistic about the future. We expect the return of urban and cross-border travel to be significant tailwind over the coming quarters. The company has weathered the pandemic better than rivals, partly because people turned to its offering of larger spaces and locations away from major cities during social distancing. 
Airbnb is also set to benefit from demand for longer stays and a shift to traveling in groups by business travelers. 24% of our nights booked in Q1 were for stays of 28 nights or longer. People are not just traveling in Airbnb, they're now living on Airbnb. And these trends are not going away. But the company also reported losses that more than tripled. It had to pay its debt for loans it took out early in the pandemic and restructuring fees following layoffs. The company also said that it was too early to predict if the recovery momentum would continue at the same pace in the second half of 2021. Evelyn Lee, NTD News. And the annual comparison of states in terms of their economic competitiveness is out. The Rich States, Poor States report tracks tax burden, size of the public sector, and some other economic factors as well to see which states are most competitive economically. Utah ranked number one again this year, and New York is dead last for the eighth year in a row. Ask Jonathan Williams at the American Legislative Exchange Council, what did change this year? In this 14th edition of the Rich States, Poor States report, uh, we've seen some things remain constant and others uh, have some big changes, as you mentioned. And uh, Florida is one of those states under Ron DeSantis, uh, governor in the free market legislature, moved up tremendously, uh, five spots, all the way to number two, their best ranking ever as a state. And of course, a state that's very competitive without a personal income tax. And during the pandemic, uh, stayed open in many cases where other states had shut down. And so they're you're seeing some great results from many of the, the free market economic policies over the years. Also, Oklahoma uh, moved up tremendously, always uh, you know a competitive state, but moved up to its best all-time ranking at number three this year. So those are two of the biggest improvers in the top five. We hear a lot of people from New York. I speak with a lot of people either they're moving to Florida or they know somebody who's, who's moving to Florida. What exactly are they doing right? a lot of things that Florida does right, you know, going without a personal income tax, as I mentioned, altogether, uh, but then, you know, also not having a death tax in a state or inheritance tax like New York and New Jersey and many of the states in the Northeast do. So businesses and and wealthy individuals uh, often flock to Florida in retirement. Uh, And then I think to overall how to do it is they balance their budget in Florida. They don't go back to taxpayers and ask for more. You know, New York just is raising taxes as part of this budget agreement. New Jersey, as we've talked about, Paul, raised taxes last fall. And so coming out of the pandemic, this is just yet another reason why Florida stays so competitive and because they balance their budget, they live within their means. And when they have a difficult budget situation, they don't go back to individuals and businesses and ask them to pay more. Hmm. You could call this maybe the, the pandemic report, right? This is the performance during the pandemic, how they performed during the pandemic. I believe you guys are now looking at already, you know, current policies, trying to look forward to see where states might end up next year. Do you see any interesting initiatives happening around the country? Well, quite a few, actually. Our ALEC uh, members are out there looking to make their states more competitive, even in this very difficult environment over the last year. And whether it was things like protect small businesses and frontline workers from uh, liability uh, coverage. And this is something that many of you know, 30 states now have adopted our ALEC model on liability coverage to give businesses the confidence to reopen. We're seeing states across the board look to cut taxes, regardless of this apparent uh, federal prohibition that you and I have talked about about, Paul. States are going forward in cutting taxes. And in fact, we just got an early court victory on one of the federal lawsuits uh, in Ohio that it looks like the federal courts are going to uh, hopefully side with the right and uh, and strike down uh, the federal restrictions on states and their ability to cut taxes. And so across the board, we're seeing some great free market reforms from states. It's great to see that they have some budget flexibility uh, now that the economy had recovered last year and now the revenue picture is much, much rosier than we thought it would be. And so states are coming back and doing some very proactive things and and really providing, I think, a very effective counterbalance to the big government and and anti-taxpayer policies, really, that are coming out of Washington, D.C. here. Yeah, the budgets have really been uh, amazing to see. If we we had a spoke this time last year, what we thought the budgets were going to be, we wouldn't have thought would be this rosy, as you put it. I hate to say it, but New York is bottom of the pack again this year. What can they do if they had two things or three things they could do this year to start climbing up the pack? What would you recommend them to do? 
Well, it's eight years in a row now at number 50 for New York in our rich states, poor states report. Uh, so it's nothing new there. I, in fact, though, I just wrote a piece with Assemblyman Robert Smullen from the New York Assembly talking about some things that New York can do to try to unwind some of the damaging policies. You know, and first of all, looking at the tax burden, whether it's the individual income taxes, the business income tax, instead of digging the hole deeper and raising those taxes this year, they need to start looking at holding the line and balancing the budget without going back to tax payers and asking for more. And then, of course, you need to start addressing property taxes in New York, one of the very big burdens for individuals across the state, especially in New York City, especially in Long Island and Westchester County, for instance. Property tax bills are way too high, and that's another area that needs to be addressed. Jonathan Williams, Alec. And Google wants to make sure that its foreign workers' spouses can still work in the United States and is drumming up support from other tech companies, too. In today's Con Fredrickson has the story. Google is leading an effort to make sure spouses of certain foreign workers are allowed to work. These foreign workers hold a type of visa called H-1B visa. Tech companies depend greatly on it to hire foreign workers. Nearly two-thirds of H-1B visa holders in the U.S. worked in tech jobs in 2019. In a blog post Friday, Google said it's voicing opposition in a federal lawsuit which tries to block 90,000 spouses of H-1B workers from having jobs in the U.S. A group of tech workers filed the lawsuit in 2015, saying they lost their jobs to H-1B workers. But Google says not allowing the spouses to work would hurt those workers' families. Big tech companies, including Amazon, Apple, Twitter, and Microsoft, all joined Google. The Obama administration made it easier for H-1B workers' spouses to get work authorization. Trump tried to discontinue the permit, but delayed finalizing the ban. This year, President Biden withdrew the ban. A federal judge is expected to rule on the lawsuit in the coming months. Colin Fredrickson, NTD News. Wall Street ended a volatile week much higher for the day. The Dow rose about 360 points, over 1%. SP500 gained 61 points, 1.5%. Tech shares bounced back, pushing the Nasdaq up 305 points, 3.2% for the day. Still, the indexes suffered their biggest weekly decline since late February. Retailers, banks, communication companies, and industrial stocks did help lift the market. Energy stocks also rose as the price of U.S. crude oil climbed 2.4%. Treasury yields mostly fell. First quarter earnings season is nearing its end. Major retailers Walmart, Home Depot, Target, Lowe's, and others are all in the docket next week. Crypto exchange Coinbase says it's getting ready to offer Dogecoin on its platform. It's according to the CEO during an earnings call. Brian Armstrong says they plan to list Dogecoin in six to eight weeks. Dogecoin, of course, was created as a joke, but has since amassed the fourth largest market cap of all cryptocurrencies. Dogecoin, of course, rallied on the news. Coinbase also reported earnings Thursday after market. Revenue more than tripled from the quarter before thanks to the crypto boom. And the company currently supports 50 cryptocurrencies. But the U.S. government is trying to root out illegal activity in the world's largest crypto exchange, Binance. Bloomberg reporting that the DOJ and the IRS are now investigating it. In today's Phil Zoe has the details. The biggest crypto exchange in the world, Binance, is under investigation by the IRS and the Justice Department. The agencies have not accused Binance of wrongdoing, but want more information on people who potentially use the platform for illegal activities such as money laundering and tax evasion. A blockchain forensics company, Chainalysis, says there are more funds transacted related to criminal activity on Binance than any other crypto exchange. The company said we take our legal obligations very seriously and engage with regulators and law enforcement in a collaborative fashion. Binance's CEO says the headlines sound bad, but in actuality, Binance is working with law enforcement to fight bad players. Binance was founded in Hong Kong only four years ago, but quickly became the top crypto exchange. It succeeded largely without government supervision, just like much of the crypto space. The firm is incorporated in the Cayman Islands with an office in Singapore. It claims to not have a single physical headquarters. Phil Zhou, NTD News. One consulting firm thinks the global semiconductor chip shortage will cost automakers $110 billion in lost revenues this year. It's almost double, double its previous estimate. 
It predicts the crisis will halt production of almost 4 million vehicles. Ford has even been forced to redesign some parts to get around the shortage. The consulting firm says automakers now want direct relationship with chip makers. They avoided this in the past because making long-term commitments to buy can be risky. But this year's production cuts have been painful and highlight the importance of supply chain resiliency. Ships are again moving through a part of the Mississippi River critical for U.S. crop exports. Over a thousand boats were backed up as inspectors checked a fractured bridge near Memphis. But even though it's back open, officials say the backlog could take days to clear. Barges carrying crude oil, crops and other materials are backed up in both directions. The Soy Transportation Coalition says almost all grain barges must pass beneath the bridge on their way to export facilities near New Orleans. And three Chinese telecom giants are about to be delisted from the New York Stock Exchange in just a few days. And a new report shows the number of Chinese companies listed on three major U.S. stock exchanges increased nearly 15 percent over the last six months. A congressional commission released a report Thursday updating the Chinese companies listed in the three largest U.S. stock exchanges. It says as of May 5, 2021, there were 248 Chinese companies listed on these U.S. exchanges, with a total market capitalization of $2.1 trillion. Compared with six months ago, when there were 217 companies with a total market capitalization of $2.2 trillion. In the current list, eight are national-level Chinese state-owned enterprises and 50 are newly added companies. To be listed on American stock exchanges is the ultimate dream and the pinnacle for many Chinese companies and for most of the companies in the world for, for that matter. You know, in addition, the Wall Street has an insatiable appetite for the Chinese market. Meanwhile, the New York Stock Exchange declined appeals by China Mobile, China Unicom Hong Kong, and China Telecom last Friday and moved to delist them in 10 days. This is to comply with an executive order introduced by then-President Trump, prohibiting investment in Chinese-funded enterprises related to the People's Liberation Army. Starting in the Trump era, U.S. authorities stepped up efforts to kick those Chinese military-related firms off the U.S. stock exchange and strengthen enforcement of disclosure requirements. And while the number of Chinese companies listed in major U.S. stock exchanges has increased, their total market capitalizations declined. Some of the better known larger Chinese companies, for fear of the more uh, stringent reporting requirements, uh, chose to, or maybe they had to, delist themselves from the U.S. exchanges. The congressional report warns that investment in Chinese companies may entail several risks, including lack of transparency, issues with legal standing, and risks to national security. Still to come. Target holds off on selling Pokemon cards and sports cards in stores. Why are they considered too dangerous to keep on the shelves? Thank you. In uncertain times, people rush to buy physical gold and silver. It's strong, solid, dependable. Now is the time to buy from the trusted source, Westminster Mint. 
With 20 years experience and A-plus BBB rating and our unconditional 30-day money-back guarantee, Westminster Mint is America's dealer. The best value in gold coins today is this newly released 2021 $50 American Gold Eagle coin, certified a perfect 70 by the world's largest grading service, NGC. At one full ounce of pure gold, this 2021 Gold Eagle is the biggest and most beautiful coin struck for circulation. Get yours now while you can at our exclusive low price. Call right now and get the Gold Eagle's perfect companion, the 2021 Silver Eagle, absolutely free with your purchase. With free shipping and a 30-day money-back guarantee, Westminster Mint is America's dealer. Hurry for your early release 2021 American Gold Eagle and free Silver Eagle before they're gone. Call now. The deadline to file your taxes is almost here. Next Monday, May 17th, is Tax Day, the official deadline for individuals to file their 2020 federal tax return. It's a month later than usual because of the pandemic, but don't expect your returns anytime soon. An unusually large backlog of returns from 2019 and 2020 are still being processed and are likely to be delayed. IRS also says it's taking longer to process mail documents like paper tax returns or other similar things. Most states have also extended tax deadlines to May 17th, though. And Pikachu has apparently gotten too dangerous for Target to sell, for the time being at least. The retailer is suspending sales of all Pokemon and sports trading cards in its stores. Last week, a Wisconsin Target was locked down after... Four people assaulted a man over sports trading cards. They've skyrocketed in value during the pandemic. For example, a Michael Jordan card that usually sells for about $200,000 auctioned for over $700,000 in February. Target plans to continue selling the cards online, though. Competitor Walmart says it will keep selling cards in its stores. Don't miss an opportunity. And a drought on the West Coast is making rivers too warm for salmon to survive. But don't worry, California has a plan by lending them a hand on their journey to cooler waters. Ema McCarthy has the story. For 17 million salmon in California, there's been a drastic change of plan. Extreme drought here means the rivers are too warm for the salmon to survive. Come spring, the young fish, called smolts, would usually be released from the Nimbus fish hatchery into the American River. Instead, California State is loading them up onto trucks and releasing them into the sea from San Francisco Bay. Harry Morse is the spokesperson for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Today we're trucking about 670,000 young salmon called smolts from the hatchery up over 100 miles away around the Sacramento River. We have very low water conditions, we have high temperatures, and under those situations, a high percentage of the young fish would not make it all the way out here to the ocean so they could start their natural cycle. It's an emergency step not taken since the last major drought in 2014. We had low amounts of rain, low amounts of of snow, and that has created uh, conditions in our reservoirs uh, where we have really low storage. And with that low storage, we typically experience um, uh, higher than average um, river temperatures and lower flows. And those are conditions for juvenile Chinook salmon that that create low survival. And we are taking our hatchery raised fish and moving them to bay release sites to increase survival uh, by reducing the amount of time that they're spending in those in those poor river conditions. Even without drought, salmon and other fish were struggling to survive on the West Coast as water projects such as dams and reservoirs inhibit their ability to migrate to the sea and back a natural part of their life cycle that can take about three years. So every year we evaluate the number of salmon that are returning to our rivers. Um, it appears that we're on a downward trend, um, but uh, you know, we're hoping that the actions that we take today is gonna increase you know, the numbers of, of fish that are, are going to be returning as adults uh, and returning to our rivers. And it's planting season for corn and soybeans again. And a father-son team in Wisconsin is working around the clock on their 1,100 acres of land. They say they feel positive about 2021 and that they're taking a natural approach. 
Dr. Daniel Hall has the story. The Pyrick family farm's fields are full of crops, but the crops are not corn nor soy, and they are not going to harvest it. We are uh, currently planting corn in our uh, rye cover crop. Josh and his father Tony started using cover crops years ago to improve the health of their soil. Right now, the rye cover crops act like placeholders for the actual harvest. The main benefit we've noticed with the cover crops is uh, weed suppression. It's been able to reduce our herbicide use on beans to help control the weeds. The Pyrex tell NTD they are optimistic about this year's corn and soy harvest. On top of that, futures for corn and soy on the NASDAQ are approaching record highs since mid-2012. Oh, it's an exciting time in agriculture now. These cover crops are fun. You see the green fields out there, you see the living roots out there, and, and it's just amazing. And seeing your biology come back to life and seeing the earthworms come back. Over 150,000 farms across the country have found benefits in using cover crops. The Pyrex have reduced fertilizer and no longer need to treat seeds with chemicals. They also no longer till the ground. In a teaspoon of soil, there's more living organisms than there is people on Earth. When you go under a microscope, and start seeing that and see what live soil looks like in the biology. It's like building a house. Okay, you build a house. Would you tear it down every year and rebuild it every year? Tony grew up farming with his father in the 70s. Josh joined him in carrying on the tradition after returning from college. So already going on 14 years already. 15 years already. Hey. <laughs> and he will carry on these conservation practices for many years to come. As the latest business updates for this week. You can still catch Entity Evening News with Stephanie Cox. That starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. For Entity Business, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. We have a new channel. Subscribe to us on YouTube at NTD News. Get the highlights of our news broadcast and the most important headlines that we curate especially for you. Don't miss out on important news. Our videos are being deleted. So if you don't want to be cut off from honest news, take a moment to sign up for our newsletter at newsletter.ntd.com so you don't lose access to NTD. Go to newsletter.ntd.com to sign up for our evening newsletter.